Hello there, welcome to the channel. I'm Cindy Daycheck with Queen Bee Creations. I appreciate your tuning in. Um, today, we are gonna be working on an item that I thrifted, which is this big galvanized metal tray. It's got these awesome row pins. I mean, it's a little large, it's a little awkward for my tabletop, but we will make do. Um, I might have to actually clean some stuff. So, you know, maybe this is a perfect project because it will prompt me to have to clean some space off. Um, I got this for $5. $5. I mean, you just can't say no to something like this. So it's, it's a little beaten up, but it's in great shape. And uh, I'm going to leave the sides alone. What I want to do is just kind of gussy up the tray part of this. And um, so what I am going to start with is I am going to tape off the sides a bit just so that I don't have to paint quite as neatly. And I'm going to paint it in paint base encasement by Fusion. That way it's already sealed. I don't have to worry about it. I want a white because we're going to be decoupaging on this. So I want the white to help brighten up and help the print colors, which are sort of pale, to work. Now, one of the things that I did do in selecting the decoupage paper is because it is 30 inches by 20. And this is something like 26 by 17, something like that. So I've got to cut off like four inches by four and three, um, a pattern that wouldn't be affected by that. So I didn't want to have anything where I end up cutting off somebody's feet or head or, you know, so just bear that in mind when you're making your selection. I actually was going to, to use a different decoupage paper than I'm going to be using for that reason, that the one that I wanted to use had a big rooster on it, but it had this lovely sign name at the top, and I either would have had to have cut the rooster off so it had no legs, so he'd look really silly, um, or I'd lose the entire top of that wonderful sign, which I didn't want to do. So um, this one is also equally beautiful, but I'm not losing any of the important elements. And so, you know, that becomes one of the key considerations as you are just kind of making some of your choices on these things is bear in mind what the actual size of your project is and uh, what paper then is going to work best for that. Because otherwise you end up with it looking a little bit disjointed or like it didn't belong. And, you know, ultimately you want it to look like it should be there. So I'm just going to get this taped off. I will press those edges down tight. Um, this is kind of a, a bit of a rough surface. So again, um, the Fusion, which has a built-in sealer and kind of self-levels a little bit, hopefully will kind of smooth out some of this surface from whatever the heck they did with it. So we'll get that done, probably two coats. Um, and uh, let it dry, and then uh, we'll be able to start decoupaging. Now that this has had a chance to dry, and I don't need it to be perfect coverage because I'm going to be decoupaging over top of it. I just want enough of the white to block the steel gray kind of color that my, my decoupage paper is going to show, right? That it's not going to get clouded by that. So the next step is to take your decoupage medium because I've got a big container of it. I am using Mod Podge, but Crystal Clear Chandelier, you know, use your preferred decoupage medium. I am cool with that, but I'm using what I have. And what I'm going to do now is I am now going to paint this entire surface. I'm going to be fairly generous with it. So I'm not skimping on it. And I am then going to let it dry. So we want to have the medium on, pay 
close attention to the edges because usually that's what, you know, the edges and the corners just kind of get shortchanged. <laughs> and uh, that becomes the area where you get lifting. So I'm gonna get this done, and as soon as I've painted it with my Mod Podge, I'm gonna also remove my tape. So I don't need that all glued in place. I'll just keep it there for now, so I don't have to be so neat and tidy about my edges. And then uh, I'll take it off, and I'll let my Dick Podge Medium dry completely. Now that my tray has dried, pretty much, just maybe one or two little tacky places. What I did do was I laid my paper down in. I wanted to keep the birds. This is the piece off the side, which is just kind of writing and other decor and florals. So I was able to take that away, still keep the title, trim a little bit off the bottom, <laughs> And I will keep these for smaller decoupage projects. But what it lets me do is just kind of line this up in here, edge to edge. And then I'm gonna grab some parchment paper. Now you'll notice usually these large sheets are going to come folded and if I'm doing them on projects using other methods I will iron out any of the creases. For this I didn't because we're going to iron them now and I just find if I'm doing a really large piece I really like doing this method of decoupaging um, more than trying to keep my paper rolled up and then doing a little bit of decoupage and then rolling it down. It's just so much easier. So what I am going to do is just, I have this on a dry heat. I've got the parchment paper protecting my good decoupage paper. And I'm just going to slowly move this over the surface. It's going to reactivate my glue and it's going to glue down my decoupage paper. Now, you'll notice this has got a really rounded tip and I've got square corners. So, because you don't need to see me ironing the whole thing. What I do have is this little iron. Now, this is typically used for uh, quilting. That's what I had it for um, because I made one quilt. <laughs> I do things by once. It's like, okay, been there, done that. Not my thing. Um, but, it, you know, it's used to get into the corners and sewing, pressing small little seams. And this just gets down into the corners of my project. Right? Hard for you to see, but. And right along all of those tight edges perfectly. So if you got an iron with a good point on it and you're able to get that to work on its own, terrific. Otherwise, it's a handy dandy little tool, works for quilting and decoupaging. I'm gonna get all of the main body of mine glued down first, then I'll go back over and do all the edging, and then I'm gonna let it cool down completely before I look at doing any kind of sealing on it. I want that glue to have firmed up and hardened again. Once this is all cool, and you know what, guys? There is no wrinkling on this whatsoever using that method. Now, if I were to just now grab a paintbrush and slop on a lot of top coat, it would um, probably cause some wrinkling because the paper is all gonna get super saturated and start to stretch and kind of wrinkle up. It doesn't mean that there's not a potential fix to that, but to avoid some of that from happening, what I like to do is just take a clear, um, this is just a, a painter's touch from, um, the hardware store, I'm going, what's the name of that store? Just from a hardware store. And I just like to spray it lightly. And all I'm doing with my, the same piece of parchment is I'm just protecting some of the 
um, edging here. And I'm just doing a really light coat. I'm just kind of going around the edges first. And just so I can talk to you, I don't, I'm, I'm spraying and dealing with the stink, but um, just so you see how light I'm doing this. You can start to see it darken the paper a little bit. And so that's what we're looking to kind of avoid with this. So I'm just doing a very light spritz. I'm gonna let that dry completely. And then I will do it again. I will probably do that about three to five times. And then I will add whatever top coat, any, any kind of acrylic that you want, depending upon how you're planning on using this piece. All right, I've done four light coats. And you can see by the sheen that this is all lightly sealed. Now I want to actually take a slightly more durable top coat. I'm using Big Top by DIY. You can use any non-yellowing polyacrylic of your choice. You know, use what you have. And I'm going to do a very light coating of this. So I don't want to, again, um, douse this, make it too heavy, cause any kind of rippling at this stage. I just want to do light coats. Once this is on and dried, I can lightly sand it and repeat. So I can do as many layers of this top coat as I would like. I just want to stay still, just kind of nice and light to ensure that my, decoup my decoupage paper doesn't start buckling or rippling on me. Usually if there's any problems with this, it's because you get things far too wet. And that's it. So I'm going to let that dry and repeat as often as I determine that I need to in order to be able to get it as protected as I want. But here's our finished tray. So what I did do was I picked a pattern um, that kind of fit within the frame. So some of the other decoupage papers, I would be cutting off too much of an image that I wanted to retain. I still wanted one that wasn't super modern, that was kind of um, a little bit vintage looking to go with the uh, distressed kind of galvanized tin look. And I think it ends up looking super sweet. I hope from this you get a couple of tips, a um, couple of ideas. One is certainly around decoupaging. If you haven't tried the iron-on method, I invite you to do that. If I was doing, you know, the backing of a big buffet hatch thing, I would certainly be using the iron-on method um, for the whole backing rather than trying to um, keep it all flat and keep it all straight. This is my preferred method. I don't use it on smalls, but on anything large, I definitely use this technique. Also, the layering of the top coats. I just find for myself, and if you've got other suggestions or ideas, please jump in and share them with other people so they can learn from you, not just from me. Um, but for myself, doing those light coats of a spray top coat because it sits on there much lighter, um, builds up some layers so that when I start adding a brushed on top coat, it's not as dense and it doesn't saturate the paper the same and doesn't cause some of the stretching or rippling of the paper as well. Um, there's nothing wrong with getting some wrinkles. You can certainly distress them, do some aging with them. There's a lot of really cool, cool looks, but when you want something to just be pretty simple, pretty flat, this is the way to go. Um, and if you get an awesome find like this, I mean, really, 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 for $5, this big coffee table size tray is awesome. So this was one of my favorite finds in a long time, and I hung on to it for quite a while. When I knew I was bringing in the Roy Cycle Decoupage papers, 
I hung on to it, um, knowing that I wanted to try one of the papers in it. I have a dresser coming up that I'm gonna use these papers on as well. And we're gonna go a little wild and funky with that one. So stay tuned. If you follow my channel, stay tuned for that one. It's coming up. But thanks for tuning in. Let me know what you think of this. If you've got some other decoupage methods that you love for big projects like this, chime in with them. I would love to learn them as would anybody else that's watching. Thanks for, for tuning in. As always, guys, look forward to seeing you on the next one. And until then, take care. Thank you.